So today we're going to be talking about revenge porn and some of the things that you can do if this is happening to you. One of the things that happens when an intimate relationship with someone who is highly narcissistic ends, well, one of the things that can happen is a thing called revenge porn. This is when a narcissistic partner decides to threaten you with sharing your intimate photos without your consent. And it can be a terrible experience that produces tremendous dread, tremendous shame, and tremendous guilt. Today, I was contacted by somebody who is going through that exact thing. And her question was, how do I get this person to not share my intimate photos? And how do I get this person to stop essentially blackmailing me? Because in her case, he wanted money. And he also wanted to talk to her one last time. So she was in a relationship with someone who she says is a narcissist. She went no contact, like literally just cut him off, which drove him bananas. And he decided to threaten her. And he told her that unless she gives him money and she talks to him, then he is going to start spreading these intimate photos that she shared with him during their relationship. I also wanted to share a statistic that I think is pretty profound because what happens to victims who are going through this, they feel bad, they feel dumb, they feel stupid for sharing their intimate photos. This is far more common than even I realize that a lot of people are sharing intimate photos with their partners online, whether it's through text messaging, whether it's through an email, just taking videos of themselves and sharing those videos. As it turns out, 38% of men and 35% of women have shared that they have sent intimate photos to their partners. And I think we also have to take into consideration that these are the people that admitted it. So my guess is that there are a lot more people that are actually sharing um, images back and forth than this poll actually identifies. I share that so that if you are someone who has done this, that you give yourself a break because what's really happened here is that you have been betrayed, that you trusted someone during an intimate time with them or during a relationship. They got you to trust them and you shared nude photos with them. And now they're using these photos against you. It's important that you realize that what's really going on here isn't the fact that you took pictures of yourself and sent them. The real issue here is that you have been betrayed or you are being threatened and you are being blackmailed. And I say that because oftentimes when we are put in a position where we're being threatened and we're afraid, we're so afraid of what we've done, our act in it, that we fail to recognize there's a crime happening here. You're a victim in this situation. And thankfully over the years, there are things that we can do about it. There are organizations that you can go to. There are laws that are put in place and there are people who can actually help you through this. It's important to realize that a crime is being committed. So it's almost like, yes, these nude photos are out there, but the real issue is the crime. And I want everybody to hear that. In the UK, the BBC reported that in England and Wales, there were 1,160 reported incidents of revenge porn from April, 2015 to December of 2015. Some victims were as young as 11 years old. So this is a travesty. This is unacceptable. And that's a very short period of time. From April 2015 to December, there were 1,160 complaints filed. And that is really alarming when you think about it, that this is happening. So many cases are being reported. It makes you wonder how many cases are actually not being reported. And again, I share that statistic with you so that if you are that person whose stomach is in a knot, who just received that threatening email or Facebook message, you know that you're not alone. So let's talk about different types of issues that are really happening when we're talking about non-consensual images of you being spread on the internet. First is blackmail. So blackmail happens whenever there's a threat used against you. If you are, have been with someone and now they're threatening to release these images, that's blackmail right off the bat. And in some states, that's, an, that's a felony. 
and it's chargeable. So you want to make sure that you're understanding what's happening. This is a form of blackmail. In some cases, abusers will actually ask for a ransom, which is what happened with the woman who contacted me today. This narcissist that she broke up with wanted money from her and threatened that if she didn't speak to him one more time and give her money, that he was going to release these images against her consent. And this is what is known as revenge porn. When an ex is blackmailing you with nude photos and in some cases threatening you in other ways and wanting money from you. So sextortion is when a stranger tricks you into sending them images online. So this might happen during a romance scheme where you are being pulled into some romance scheme online. You've never met this person. They're love bombing you. They have a fake profile on Facebook. They have a fake TikTok account online. You're looking and everything looks okay, but these romance scammers are not stupid. And I always say to myself, just get a real job. I mean, if you're that smart, get a real job, stop hurting people. But we all know that narcissistic people exist, that the world is both light and dark and it's good and bad. There's a mix of all of it. And for every wonderful person out there that you might be, meet, there are just as many people out there who are not so nice. So in the world of romance schemes, we want to be aware. In the world of online dating, we want to be aware that romance schemes exist. And anyone that asks you to send them a nude picture of yourself, especially someone that you've never met, then you want to understand that that's a red flag. And the best way to arm yourself against this happening to you is to not send nude pictures of yourself to anyone. But if it has already happened, then we want to know what we're talking about. So in a romance scam, when you haven't met this person, essentially there's a stranger, this person is known as a sex torsionist. So this is a person who is using sex torsion to get you to do something that they want you to do. In lots of cases, it's to send them money. So there are also phishing scams where perpetrators claim that they've hijacked your home computer. And if you do not send them a ransom, then they're going to send nude photos or videos of you to all of your contacts. So I researched this topic because I wanted to be able to help this person that reached out to me. And it turns out that there are organizations that can definitely help with this type of a situation. And global companies like Facebook and TikTok and Reddit and others are engaging. There is an organization called the NCII, and that st stands for Non-Consensual Intimate Image Abuse. So this is a free tool that's designed to assign a hash value to this image that you have that you're worried about uh, someone spreading. And this is also known as the digital footprint. So the NCII will share this digital information, this blueprint with Facebook, with TikTok, with Reddit, with Instagram, with Bumble and OnlyFans, and they will set up an alert. If this picture pops up with this digital blueprint, there are teams that they have that they employ to remove this picture from the internet, which is amazing. Another organization that you can reach out to if you're having this issue is called cybersmile.org. They are a nonprofit that helps victims of this type of abuse through cyberbullying. So you can call them, it's a free resource, and they can point you in the right direction. Withoutmyconsent.org is another organization that you can reach out to. Really awesome organization. They empower you if you are someone who is going through this violation, this privacy violation. And their work centers around the non-consensual distribution of sexually explicit images. So this is definitely a company that you want to reach out to or an organization that you want to re reach out to if you're going through this. There's also the Cyber Civil Rights Initiative. Now this is a really amazing organization that actually trains they train lawyers, they train professionals on how to deal with this type of attack, this type of a violation. And their mission is to align technology with the protection of civil rights. They really want to advocate for people whose privacy is being violated in this way. So you want to reach out to these organizations and you also want to take advantage of the NCII tool. So this is a website that you go to, you upload your images, you fill out their form and they go to work for you. So it's a free tool and I do definitely think that we should be taking advantage of that if we're going through with this. Another great resource is the Revenge Porn Hotline because this is a bigger issue than a lot of people realize and it's becoming a bigger issue. 
And it's something that I think victims of this type of abuse need to understand is available so to empower them. So take advantage of the revenge porn hotline as well. Okay, so some of the things that you can do today if you're going through this is preserve all communication. Have they blackmailed you through text? Have they blackmailed you through emails? You wanna make sure that you're keeping a log and that you have everything printed out that proves that you're actually being cyberbullied and being blackmailed in this way. So all communication should be printed and put in a file. The next thing you wanna do is, because this is such an isolating experience and so many people who go through this, they end up spiraling out of control. They feel ashamed, they feel stupid. They're so worried about what people are going to think about them. They think the negative, they think the worst. And rather than believe or imagine that someone's going to see them as a victim, they oftentimes are shrouded in shame, worrying about what people are going to think about them and what they did. And in this situation, it can be very, very scary for a family member to watch someone that they love that's going through this begin to spiral. So it's important that if this, this is you, if you're going through this, that you begin to understand that you are a victim here and that the people that love you are going to understand that you were betrayed and they're going to understand the very natural shame that you feel, worrying about what other people are going to think about you, worrying about your re reputation, all of those really strong negative emotions are very valid, but you want to believe that the people that you love are going to understand. So make sure that you reach out to a trusted friend. Make sure that you, if you have a good relationship with your mom, tell your mom. If you have a good relationship with your dad, tell your dad. Tell someone so that you can cut this burden in half. Because when you find someone that you can trust and you see the empathy in their eyes, then you realize that what's happening is really happening, but you don't have to carry the shame of it. You don't have to feel like you're the worst person in the world because you've done this thing. Turns out a lot of people are doing this, so you're not alone. And so sharing it is going to absolutely help you get through it. The next thing you wanna do is immediately adjust your privacy settings across all social media platforms. So if you have to block this person, block this person. If you, would, you have to adjust your privacy settings so that this person can't see you, you definitely wanna do that. Another thing that you can do is that you can set up an alert, a Google alert for your name, a Google alert for your Facebook name, your TikTok username. You wanna make sure that you're setting up alerts so that if anything pops up on the internet, you're flagged, you know that this information has been shared and you take screenshots and you print out whatever it is that, that you receive because you're building a case against the blackmailer. According to blackmail attorneys, you should not negotiate with someone who is blackmailing you. This is a no-no. You should not negotiate ransom with someone who is blackmailing you. And instead, you should talk to an internet blackmail attorney who can guide you through this process. It's also a very good idea to start a paper trail with the local police department. And I think one of the things that inhibits us from actually taking that step is we're embarrassed, we're ashamed. What are they gonna think about us? So we really have to get beyond that and start advocating for the self. And that's why it's important that if you are a victim of a crime, whatever that crime is, you own it. In other words, like I'm the victim here and this is wrong and this should not be happening and I have rights here. That is not you playing the victim. That is you stepping out of the victim role when you say, I'm a victim here. There's a big difference between playing the victim and actually acknowledging that you've been a victim and then advocating for yourself in that plane of consciousness, saying, wait a minute, this should have never happened, and this is wrong, and if this person is doing it to me, they might do it to another person, and I don't want them to get away with this, and I want to take advantage of as many tools and as many organizations and as many rights that I physically have. And so I'm stepping into that role. That is you advocating for yourself. And that is your right, dear one. At the end of the day, you want to understand, like in any form of healing and recovery work, that what you're feeling is absolutely valid. You want to acknowledge from a higher state of consciousness 
the anxiety that you feel because it's real. It's a normal response to this type of a stressor. So cortisol is going to kick up. Your heart rate's going to kick up. You may experience brain fog. You may ruminate. It may be very difficult for you to fall asleep. You are out of peace. You are out of alignment and all of that makes sense. What helps us is to know that we have resources that we can turn to, that we can take this, we can learn from it and we can move forward. And if you are someone who is watching a loved one go through this, your job is to help them feel normalized. In other words, like it's your job to validate them, to understand their grief, understand their embarrassment, understand their shame, and just let them talk about it and to help them get through it and to help them take the necessary steps to protect themselves from this type of exploitation online. It's hard to imagine dear ones that storms pass when you're in the eye of the tornado. But if you take a moment and you think about your life and you think about all the things that you've ever gone through, chances are you're going to find at least one and most likely two times in your life where you have faced an amazing uphill battle and you overcame it. So try to remember that this too shall pass. Try to rem remember that the job of a narcissist, whether it's through a romance scheme, whether and it's a stranger you've never met, or it's the revenge of a narcissist who is now using revenge porn against you. The entire desire of someone who has these types of personality traits is to elicit fear inside of you, to make you so afraid that you don't step out of the shadows and recognize I'm a victim here and you're a perpetrator and I have rights. The last thing they want is for you to start thinking clearly. The last thing they want is for you to become proactive and advocate for yourself. They want you in a state of shame and shame is probably the worst human emotion there is because it makes us feel worthless. It makes us feel hopeless and it makes us feel like we are unworthy of anything that's good in life. And yet the truth is at our core, we are all good enough. We are all sacred beings and we have human emotions that can be very overwhelming and to, and bring us down like an undertow. And I think that is the battle that we face. Can we develop the ability to overcome the shame and overcome the fear that so many narcissists want to elicit in the hearts of victims? And it is my hope that this session has empowered you with some ideas and some action steps that you can take to help you advocate for yourself if this is happening to you. Dear one, you are enough. You are enough. And remember, predators want you to live in fear. And our job is to overcome fear and to face whatever it is that we need to face with courage and to acknowledge, yes, this is embarrassing and I wish it never happened, but it happened and everybody needs to get over it. And if people that I know are going to talk about me and blast me on social media, then they were never my friends in the first place. And if they don't have empathy for the situation that I am, that I am in, then they are not my people because you should surround yourself with people who love you, who have empathy for you and who can advocate for you. And as things like this happen, this is when we begin to see who our friends are and who our enemies are. And so your friends will support you. Your friends will have empathy for you. They'll share their experiences with you. And anyone who is going against you or making this worse for you is someone you have to cut out of your life. Sort of like when you trim a plant of its dead leaves. When you trim a plant of a dead leaf, it gets stronger because it's not flowing energy towards this dead leaf anymore. So now there's more energy for the life source that it is. So I hope that this has helped you and I want you to believe in yourself and I want you to believe that you can get through this. And I want you to believe that you're stronger than this situation and that you don't have to live in fear. Namaste everybody. Until next time. Bye for now. As I bow to the love and the light that is absolutely in you. <laughs>